I think it's useful to think of a Python program as executing within an execution space. And if we consider an instance of a class within this execution space, in other words, an object, what we have is it represented here by a schematic diagram, where the object has an identifier, it has attributes at its core, which are essentially used to store things, and surrounding the attributes, it has behaviors, where the behaviors are tiny bits of code called methods that will do something for us. In other words, what we have here is an object whose behaviors and attributes are defined by a class. Consider this particular snippet of code. Welcome is assigned the string hello world. If we consider this in its execution space, when this one line executes, we'll have an object being created, an instance of the class string. Why the instance of the class string? Because we're assigning the string hello world to the variable welcome. So at the center of this object, we will have hello world. This particular object will have the identifier welcome. Now surrounding the core, we're going to have methods. Here we can see we have capitalize. Here we can see we have case fold. Another method is center. Another method is count. And there'll be many more methods around the outside of the core. And remember, this is just a schematic diagram to help us gain a feel for what an object actually is. Let's consider this snippet of code. And let's look at the first line, which is welcome is assigned hello world. And we should know now we will need the execution space. And what this first line will do, it'll create an instance of a string class. And within the center of this instance, it'll have the string hello world. And of course, this particular instance, this particular object, will have the identifier welcome. Now, we've already seen that surrounding the inner core of this particular object, i.e. The, the attributes, we have these particular methods, capitalize, case fold, center, count, and so on. Now, what we're really looking at here is something referred to as encapsulation. That's where the attributes and the methods that will act upon those attributes actually are grouped together in this entity called object. And encapsulation is a very useful feature, which we can talk about at some other time. But that's what we actually have here. We have a form of encapsulation, where the data and the code are grouped together in this entity called an object. Let's now move on to the next line of code. And here you can see that the variable new welcome is assigned. And on this side, we have the word welcome, a full stop, and then capitalize. This all together is regarded as a message. And it is a message that's been sent to this object called welcome, which we can clearly see is this object here. Now, this capitalize is often referred to as the message bit of the message. And what this is going to do, it's going to invoke this particular method in this object, which has the name welcome. So we can show that schematically by this arrow, where the message capitalize is going in. And what this capitalize is going to do is to focus and invoke the method that must exist inside this object. Otherwise, we would not be sending it this message. So we can discount all of the others. And I'm going to emphasize the point that we're going to be invoking or executing the capitalize by moving it to here. Now we have to be clear as what's going to happen now. This method is going to work with this attribute and it's going to produce the following. It's going to produce hello world. And I'd like to emphasize that this string does not get altered. Now the reason this string string does not get altered is that the instance of a string class, i.e. an object that is a string, is immutable. You cannot change its attribute once it is created. So what the capitalize has done, it's gone to this hello world and it's produced this. And you should be able to see that the difference is we have a capital H here, whereas here we had a lowercase h. And that's what the capitalize does. Where would you want something like that? Well, you might want a program that looks at text and makes sure that the start of a sentence always starts with a capital letter. So if a user has typed in 
and has typed in mistakenly a lowercase letter you can write some code which will make his uppercase there's a, just a, an illustration of where this might be useful now this string hello world will actually be assigned to this variable new welcome and we can show that being returned and we can see that the message is now actually over and we have stored hello world in the variable new welcome with the h in its capital form now this particular object will go back to being what it was before it's sitting there waiting to be used again but obviously in this snippet of code i'm not using it again and also i would like to emphasize that this variable here will indeed be another instance of a string class in other words another object i just haven't shown it in this execution space if we now have a look at these two lines what they're going to do is produce the output for the program and we can see this line produces hello world because it's taking it from this attribute here and of course this hello world is taken from this variable which will be the object that I haven't shown in this execution space let's return to look at this program again and let's have a look at the execution space from the viewpoint of the objects that are actually created if we look at the first line here welcome is assigned hello world then what's going to happen we're going to have an instance of the string class as you can see here and at its core it's going to have the string hello world and the identifier of this string is welcome because that's how it appears in the program here when we come onto this line well we've already shown the messages taking place but what we need to realize is another object is going to be created by this line and that object is shown here and we can see that the object has the identifier new welcome because that's how we had the variable appearing here in the code and if we have a look at the center of this object you can see it's got hello world and you can see the h is actually capitalized and we're not going to look at the details of how this happened in terms of which particular method is invoked we've just done that a moment ago but when we now want to execute these two lines and see what we get out from the program we get this and we need to be quite sure as to where this hello world came from well it came from here it came from this object which had this identifier because that's how the identifier appeared here in the print this hello world came from this object which had this identifier because that's the variable as it appeared in the code here let's have a look at this program if we look at the first line welcome is assigned hello world now we've seen this already so we're going to have an object created that's going to have as its attribute hello world if you look at the next line however we're saying welcome is assigned welcome after it's been capitalized and we've already been looking at the fact that welcome in fact is immutable so what's going to happen in these circumstances well the program isn't going to crash let's see in fact what happens and we need to return to our understanding of how objects are created well here's the execution space and we can see that the first line creates this here it creates an object and this object is going to take at its core the hello world now this particular object has the identifier welcome and we have to realize that this is an object reference which will contain an arrow which I'm using this to represent an address and of course this welcome is going to be bound to this particular object here when we now go on to do the next line well what's going to happen is this is going to actually invoke this capitalize here it's going to go to this string and it's going to produce hello world where the h is going to be capitalized and another object is going to be created and you can see it has got the string hello world with the h capitalized now this object is going to have the name welcome the identifier welcome so what will happen here well it means that the welcome reference this reference here this object reference will no longer point to the object that contained the hello world when the h was lowercase consequently it cannot be bound to that what will happen welcome will get a new object reference 
which will bind it to this particular object here. This original object is now not pointed to by any object reference. Consequently, it'll be marked for garbage collection. And that's what will happen. At some appropriate point in time, Python will say, look, I have nothing pointing to this. This is an object in my execution space. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove it. So it removes it. And now we have this new object with hello world within it. Now, what if I was now to print? What would I print? Well, you would print hello world. What happened to the hello world when it was lowercase? Well, I'm afraid that's gone. We can't print that one out any longer because it no longer exists. It's been garbage collected as far as this animation is shown. To emphasize what we've just looked at, let's have a look at this computer program and runtime. Well, if we have a look at the first line here, we know that's going to create an instance of an object, and that instance is going to hold the string hello world where the h is lowercase. So when we come here to print it, we can see it prints hello world, and we can see the h is lowercase. When we come to here, we're now going to print the ID of that particular object, and you can see that's its ID there. Now, I've covered ID in a previous video. It's important if you don't understand what I meant by the ID of the object, you need to go back to look at that particular video. When I now come onto this line, what I'm doing, I'm saying let welcome be assigned welcome dot capitalize. So in other words, I'm going to use the message that's implied in this line to capitalize the hello world where the H was lowercase, make it uppercase and assign that to the variable welcome, the object that welcome is going to represent. And of course, when I now print welcome, you can see it prints hello world. And when I now come to print the ID of welcome, you can see it's this value. And you should note it's different to this one. Now that is telling us that we now have a different object holding the hello world after it's been capitalized. So when we did this, we had an object. When we did this, we got rid of the original object and we have a new object with the new string in with the H capitalized. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.